Welcome to the Gene Policini Center on the campus of the Rochester Institute of Technology, where tonight it's free ticket Saturday for RIT students as the hometown Tigers close out their series with Army West Point. Last night's sophomore goaltender Ian Andriano made his first start of the season and picked up the victory in net. The Barry Ontario native will get the call again tonight in place of the injured Logan Dracken. Number six for the Tigers is Gabe Valenzuela. The senior forward helped spark the offense last night with a goal and two assists after rejoining Abbott Grudakis and Eric Brown on the Tigers' top line. See if they can get, keep it going here tonight. You're watching RIT Sports Zone pregame live, presented by Taylor. The builders, so much to get to over the next half hour as we get you set for faceoff in this Atlantic Hockey Showdown between RIT and the Black Knights of Army. Good evening, I'm Kevin Roach, and welcome to RIT Sports Zone pregame live here on CW Rochester. Well, after starting all but one of the Tigers' first 22 games, sophomore Logan Drackett did not dress last night. Drackett suffered an ankle sprain in last Saturday's loss at Bentley, opening the door for fellow sophomore Ian Andriano to make his first start since February of last year. Two and four on his career, and he got some help early on, less than four minutes in. Eric Brown as the top line was reunited, ripping it past Jared Dempsey, his team leading 11th on the year. RIT led one to nothing, but just 35 seconds later, Army gets the equalizer. Michael Wilson puts the loose puck in his third of the year to tie us up at one. Three minutes later, Army looking to go ahead after the Regan Seiferling, Seiferling turnover, but Andriano makes the stop to keep us tied at one after one. Second period, Tigers on the power play. Eric Brown in front, denied, but Gabe Valenzuela there for the putback, his eighth on the year. RIT went back in front 2-1. Again, it would not hold. Under seven to go, the Buffalo native, Western New York native, back in town, Zach Evencho beats Andriano. Ian couldn't get his glove on it. That tied us at two, and then Army with a golden opportunity on the breakaway, but Andriano with a nice big pad save to keep us knotted at two after two in the third. Oh, the Tigers, they just finished off the turnover by Trevor Fiddler. Jake Hamaker going to the net and getting number eight on the year for him. It was 3-2 RIT, and then watch the beautiful feed here by Valenzuela to Regan Seiferling. Sticks with it, gets it to go. His first collegiate goal. Oh, RIT hitting their stride at the right time of the year. They win it last night by a final of 4-2. to two. Our defenseman has been doing such a great job on little small chips around the net to our forwards, and our breakouts are so much cleaner that it helps when that first pass is good. It helps us to create more offense um, instead of just always dumping it in and chasing it. So there's a lot, of, a lot more flow into the game, and our mindset is very different now. I feel like everyone is engaged in knowing that like, we've been here so many times, especially the older guys, that these two points can mean the difference at the end where we can be fourth or second or seventh yeah. and second. So we know how important each game is. So we're just playing like each game is like a playoff game. 33 saves, a win. What does it do for your confidence after sitting for so long? It feels good. I mean, a little, a little shaky right off the hop there. The boys are great with me, you know, let me know they have confidence in me, um, you know, hoping, wishing me well. And, you know, getting that first one was huge. Um, but yeah, I think. I know I can I can play here and, and contribute, and it's just nice to, to do it, and it's nice to get it done. Yeah, Andriano getting the job done for RIT in last night, stopping 32 of 34 shots. It was a special teams victory for the Tigers as well. As for the eighth straight game, they scored at least one once on the power play, going one for three on Friday night. Army was 0 for 2 with the man advantage. And how about the Tigers' top line getting back together and accounting for eight points, including goals from Valenzuela, Brown, and three assists from Abbott Gerduckis. With more on last night's victory and a preview of tonight's matchup, our John DeTulio standing by live now with RIT head coach Wayne Wilson. Johnny. All right, Kevin, thanks so much. You know, the key to beating Army is staying out of the box, and that's what you did last night. How were you guys able to play such a clean game last night, Wayne? Yeah, really just moving our feet, I think, is the key. As soon as you start standing around, you start reaching with your stick, and you're going to get something called on you. So I thought we did a really good job. Uh, you got to have good discipline, and they normally have come out very physical. We were expecting that tonight. So again, keeping our composure, just play the game and, and uh, move our feet, move the puck, and get up and down the ice. 
What's been the key in turning your power play around? Eight straight games now with at least one power play goal. Yeah, I think the power play has been good all year long. I mean, we've got to be close to the top in, in that category. Uh, we've liked our puck movement. Some games it goes in for you, sometimes it doesn't. I thought we had a lot of good looks, a lot of shots on our power play last night, so we want to continue with that. And then I thought our penalty killing in particular did a really good job. Even though we only had a kill off two, they only had the one shot, and that was outside the blue line. So I thought we did a good job with our, our uh, uh, rush defense on that. And then in the zone, we took away some of the things that they'd like to do. You've got two defensemen out tonight. You've got to shuffle some things. It's, I guess that's life in, uh, in Atlantic hockey. Yeah, I think, you know, at this point of the season, once you get through about three quarters of your year, you're going to get yeah. banged up a little bit. I think everything's somewhat minor right now, and we like to keep it that way. But it uh, gives our younger guys an opportunity. They've been getting a little bit of ice time with uh, dressing a seventh defenseman and that. They'll be ready to go, and they're down to five defensemen, so we want to take advantage of that and, and wear on them and uh, play a heavy game on top of their D. What do you want to see from Ian tonight? Well, I just I think uh, just take another step forward. I think uh, as the game went on uh, last night, he got more and more comfortable, and uh, I think we'd like to see that again. I think getting off to a good start will uh, help him and uh, uh, keep easing his nerves. As as when you haven't played in a long time, you, you feel the weight of the, the team on your shoulders, and he's just got to play his game and not worry about it, and I thought he did a good job last night. Playing your best hockey, what's been the key? One loss in your last eight games, Wayne. You, re you guys are just getting points and playing well. What's been the key for you guys? I think balance. I think uh, as much as uh, Gabe's line uh, pulled through last night, but our freshman line's been doing really well. I thought uh, uh, Mark Logan and, and um, uh, Ryan Cooper played very well on, the, on our fourth line there. But I just think good balance, uh, special teams, and uh, really uh, limit the amount of time we spend in our end and spend more time in there and as much as we can. All right, that's head coach Wayne Wilson. His team looking for a sweep against Army. Speaking of the Black Knights, here with a preview is my broadcasting partner, Gene Battaglia. Gino? All right, thanks, Johnny. Here with Army head coach Brian Riley. And your team has been so good on the power play, yet you didn't get an opportunity until the third period last night. So what's the trick to get more opportunities here tonight? Well, you, you, you have to give RIT credit because they, they didn't put themselves in a situation where they had to kill many penalties. And I think, obviously, when, when you know you're going up a team that has a good power play, you don't want to give them opportunities. So uh, I thought they did a good job with that. But... And then on their kills, um, they had more of a sense of urgency killing than we had on the power play. And uh, we're going to have to change that if we're going to get opportunities tonight. Tonight you're going uh, with another goaltender, Trevin Kozlowski. Tell us a little bit about this young man. So Trevin, uh, he's been out for 10 weeks now with an injury. This is his first game back. When he went out, he was 5-2-1, and one, playing very well. So we're excited to have him back. and. Obviously, th this will be a tough situation, but the only way we can get him back in game shape is if he has the opportunity to play. Tigers have a few injuries, so do you guys. You're going to have five defensemen tonight. Talk about that challenge. So, you know what? Th this has just been an injury plague year for us. Uh, we've had a lot of guys out. Last night, we lost two more D, so uh, we'll dress five. Um, but, you know, like I said, this is something that, that we've dealt with all year, and what it does is it gives other players opportunities. So it's kind of that next man up mentality, and uh, I'm excited to see how, how our guys respond. Finally, uh, Army, a team we certainly have a lot of respect for. What is it like coaching these young men who have made this commitment? You know what, I tell people my dad coached at Army for 36 years. As a kid growing up, I didn't understand why he stayed. Now having had the opportunity to kind of sit where he sat, I know why he stayed. You know. Um, to be able to coach and, and ultimately in some small way help to shape and develop young men that are going to lead this nation's sons and daughters in faraway lands, uh, to me makes this the most rewarding and humbling job in all of college sports. Well, Brian, we're looking forward to a fun game here tonight. All right, enjoy talking to you. Brian Riley, the head coach of the Army Black Knights. Kevin, we send it back to you. All right, Gene, thanks so much. We appreciate all our service academies do for our country. Gino, we'll see you soon. Thanks so much. Well, after going unbeaten in seven of their last eight, the Tigers have moved up in the standings in Atlanta hockey over the last month with a victory last night. RIT in a three-way tie for third with Mercyhurst and Niagara. AIC remains on top of the league 
despite the loss to the Lakers last night. Only four points separate third and eighth place. Remember, the top five earn a first round bye in the playoffs come March. On the Atlantic Hockey scoreboard, only one game has gone final. Holy Cross defeated Sacred Heart. 4-1 this afternoon. Bentley and Canisius just underway at Harbor Center as the Falcons look to complete the sweep. And later tonight, Robert Morris at Air Force AIC in Erie to face Mercyhurst. Well, still to come on the program, what are the keys to tonight's game? John and Gene will rejoin us to break down the matchup. Plus, a pair of seniors reached career milestones earlier this month. We'll hear from the line mates who have joined exclusive company in the RIT record books. But first, he's on pace to have his best statistical uh, season yet. Our Kim Burnson talks live with RIT junior forward Sean Cameron next as we roll on live from the Gene Policini Center on the campus of RIT. It's game night. We got you covered. This is RIT Sports Zone pregame live. Opportunity. Here comes Powell going in. Powell fires. Big time save. Getting the leg out was Parker Gahagan. And that's a highlight stop. I mean, Powell just picks the pocket, comes in. This is great puck handling. He thinks he has a goal. Look at that. Zone end, Ryan Nick, number four. Turnover in front. Gurdakis scores! Abbott Gurdakis with the goal, and the Tigers lead one to nothing. I'm trying to figure out what Ryan Nick did with the puck. He had the puck behind the net and then threw it back towards the net. I'm trying, well, watch Ryan Nick and try to just throw it along the boards, right, Gino? Advance the puck. What is that? And now a potential breakout here for Army. Shoveled ahead. Far side. Quick shot and a goal. Back and forth we go. And that goal by number 18, Zach Avencho. Nine and a one. And center ice for Baker. Sends it over to Norrish. Lifted ahead. Preston in his own end. Gives it up. Brubaker sending it ahead. It scores! And the Tigers have won it! Powell with the deflection in front. 2 on RIT. Comes from the point. Get the puck to the net. Good things are happening. We thought a goal like that was going to win it. A deflected goal, some puck luck. And how about that sweep, Gino? Fantastic for RIT. Yeah, when it comes to this series, RIT has been fantastic against Army over the years. The Tigers now lead the series with a record of 23 and 6, including an 8 1 and 1 record over the last 10 meetings. As far as conference titles go, the closest Army has gotten was 2007 when they lost down at the Blue Cross Arena in the championship, the finals to Air Force by final of 6 to 1 that night. The road to the Atlantic Hockey playoffs and championship seems to get tougher every season, but RIT is surging at the right time, thanks in part to guys like junior forward Sean Cameron, who has been huge on that second line all season long for RIT. He is standing by live now with our Kim Burnson ringside. Kim? <laughs> Sean, um, so you're back in your line uh, now with Alden Dupree. Dupree, seems like you guys have been clicking offensively. What do you have to do to try to generate some more of those opportunities again tonight? Uh, I mean, We've been aligned together the whole year. Uh, we just, in the past stretch, we weren't, and uh, I'm glad we're back together. The chemistry was there since the start, and uh, I guess yesterday it was there, it was there still. Uh, down two defensemen tonight due to injuries. What does the team have to do to help fill in some of those gaps? I mean, uh, we're confident in every D that's in the lineup tonight. Uh, we got some young Ds that are really good. Uh, they've proven it over the year this year, so uh, we're not scared at all. We're very confident, and uh, we just maybe have to play a little more defensively, but help them out sometimes, talk to them, and give them confidence, and they'll grow into it. And uh, another tough matchup here with Army. You guys did a really good job staying out of the box yesterday. How do you plan to continue to do that again tonight? Uh, yes, that's very key for us. Uh, we know they're a physical team. They're a little chippy. Uh, so we just got to master their game and uh, stay out of the box. And Sean, thanks so much, and good luck tonight. Kevin? All right, Kim, thanks so much. Well, if you're just joining us here on RIT Sports Home Pregame Live, starting goaltender Logan Drackett did not dress last night after suffering an ankle injury during last Saturday night's loss at Bentley. So for the second straight night, head coach Wayne Wilson has decided to rest his starting netminder and turn over the reins to sophomore Ian Andriano once again. Andriano stopped 32 in net last night, picking up his 
third career victory as a Tiger. For Army, they are making a change. Sophomore Jared Dempsey, who took the loss last night and is winless in his last seven appearances, will be replaced by number 33, Trevin Kozlowski, the sophomore from Valencia, California. Hasn't played since November 10th because of an injury when he helped Army defeat Sacred Heart. Well, over the last three weeks, the Tigers have not only taken a big jump in the standings, but they've also received a number of individual accolades, too. Forward Abbott Gerduckis and defenseman Adam Brubaker were named Hobie Baker Award candidates. Freshman Kobe Walker scored his first collegiate goal, and two seniors joined exclusive company as they eclipsed the century mark. Laughing, 14 seconds remaining. Mulcahy giving it up. Valenzuela down the ice. Seniors Eric Brown and Gabe Valenzuela have been lighting up the stat sheet since their freshman season. I think both guys made an impact on our program really from the get-go. And, um, you know, some guys you've got to, you know, ease into the lineup. Uh, other guys come in and make a splash right off the get-go, right uh, from our captain's practices on. And uh, I think both Gabe and Eric made a, a statement early, and um, uh, they've never really looked back. Brown will leave RIT as the school's all-time leading goal scorer. And earlier this month, he became just the 11th Tiger to eclipse 100 career points. I wanted to, you know, have a, have a pretty good career here at RIT. And um, so in terms of expectations, I'd say that's, uh, yeah, I kind of expected myself or at least set that goal to be there. And uh the fact that it happened is, um, or it's happening, is an absolute uh, blessing and unfortunate um, that uh, everything's worked out in, in that way. But Brown isn't the only one who joined the 100-point club. Valenzuela reached the milestone in the same game, just two periods later. It was a good feeling knowing uh, such like good players have it. I know Garbo, Miles last year, and uh, I think Josh Mitchell as well. Knowing some of those guys and. Being considered up there with them is something really special. Gabe is uh, uh, outstanding with the puck, and uh, as far as bringing, uh, attracting a lot of attention and then dishing it off to other people, and Eric's the guy that is the finisher and uh, would like to see Gabe uh, with the puck. And then we've mixed our lines a little bit here as well, and, uh, and that's kind of paid off, I think, for both of them as well. Both Brown and Valenzuela agree that while the individual accolades are nice, they won't mean as much if the team falls short of its goals. It's nice to leave your mark, you know, individually by getting those, you know, those accolades and you know making your stamp. But it's a, it's a heck of a lot better in, uh, in terms of how it feels and, and and on the school and on the program when uh, the mark that you leave is, is a championship. Turn around, shot, he scores! Oh, oh. What a play! Oh, big things from Eric Brown and Gabe Valenzuela senior seasons. Well, still to come on the show, John and Gene will be back with their thoughts on RIT Army Round 2. Plus, we'll take you to the Clark Gym to see if the RIT women's basketball team could extend their win streak to three. That's all next. This is RIT Sports Zone pregame live. Gerduckis with some room on the far side. Drop pass to Brown. Brown fires, scores! <laughs> Eric Brown on the beautiful drop pass from Gerduckis. 1-0 RIT. Now the corner crew will count it down. Andriano the save. Oh, and it just put back in. Ooh. Andriano got a little careless there yeah. as far as clearing the puck or covering up, and Army takes advantage of that mistake. Valenzuela, down low, Brown, and it deflects in! And the Tigers on the power play have taken a 2-1 to one lead. Things opening up here as Avancho scores! Oh, no. We are tied at 2. The Buffalo native, Zach Avancho, with his 8th of the season. And opportunity oh, going in, Maruya, Maruya, oh, and a big save on the breakaway. Adriano taking him out, it's still a tie game. Fiddler will take it to the corner and give it away for some reason. Coming in front of him. Yes. That's number 14, Jake Hamaker on the giveaway by Fiddler. 3-2 Army. Shorthanded meeting on the blue line for the rest of this game. Valenzuela coming in. Valenzuela. Oh, drop the lead. Oh, big save for the puck. Jumping in. Reagan cipherling, and then he gets decked at the end. Big goal for the Tigers. They're up 4-2. 
it to. Yeah, big two points for the Tigers last night following a 4-2 victory over Army. If you want to see highlights from any of our broadcasts this season, head to RITSC.com and click on Hockey Central. Joined now by John and Gene and guys for a series that is always so hard fought and one where every game has to be earned. It's amazing. RIT has gone unbeaten in 26 of the 29 meetings with Army. Tonight they go for the sweep in hopes of keeping pace in this competitive league. Uh, two points is okay. Four points is better, though, John. They're rolling right now. You think about it, just one loss in their last eight games. If you can get a sweep, then you get a week off, so to speak, because you're playing Arizona State before you travel to Holy Cross. Big game for both teams, certainly for RIT, because you try to get four points and position yourself even higher in Atlantic hockey standings. So, John, last night I thought the key was special teams. The Tigers won that battle. Well, they were a difference. They only gave up two penalties last night, and even talked with Wayne, he thought the Willett penalty should have been called. So really one penalty in all, and then their power play, one for three, continues to strike gold. Eight straight games with at least one power play goal, 11 out of the last 12 games. It's on fire right now. Yeah, one of those snipers that the Tigers have to concern themselves with. Well, he got the second goal last night. Zach Avencio out of Buffalo, played for the Junior Sabres. He's asking to step up a lot. Alex Wilkinson is out. They kept Dalton McAfee in check. But keep your eye on the guy you just mentioned. Big goal last night, great two-way player, really helps out big time on that power play when they get on the power play, something they couldn't do last night, but number 18 is a special player. Wayne Wilson shuffled up the lines last night, and he hit big, moving game balance, Wayla back on the brown Gerducus line. Just a fantastic player, great puck handler, great speed, great vision, and he's a finisher, which we, we, we have learned over the years, you know, eight goals, 12 assists, 20 points, that line is clicking now. Brown is back, he's out of that slum, Gabe is on fire, and Gerduckis is having a great year. One of the best lines in the country, anchored by number six. So, John, opportunity tonight to get the four points this weekend. What has to happen? Well, you know, last night's victory came with a cost. They've got two players out, two defensemen, so baby blue liners, Cypherly and Vallette, will not play. Zach Salum and Spencer Berry, the two freshmen, getting some ice time tonight. Mr. Clean, <laughs> keep it clean. Wax on, wax off is what we're talking about. Got to stay out of the box. That's the key to beat an Army. And eyes on number four, Ian. The eyes on Ian, who played well last night. There's a lot of room for improvement. I think he'll even be better tonight between the pipes. This should be a hard-fought game. Always is when you play the Black Knights Army. Coming up, the 505 face-off. Kevin, we're looking forward to this one. All right, guys, we'll see you in a few minutes. Thanks so much. Well, meanwhile, hockey isn't the only sport in action on campus today. The RIT men's and women's basketball teams are also home this weekend. RIT women hosting William Smith and Clark Jim this afternoon, looking to pick up their third straight conference win. First quarter off the miss of the open three. They hustle for the rebound, and Tara Lynch, strong underneath, puts it up an inch. She had 12 points. In the second, the Tigers adding to the lead. A great take here the, to the hoop by Brooke Stanley, and she... Gets the friendly roll. Stanley added 16 in the fourth. Tigers in total control. Brooke Stanley can't get it to go in the lane. Rebound gets tapped out to Sabrina Wolf, who drives and scores. She led all scores with 25 points, 10 rebounds. RIT has won three in a row. They went big, 79 to 57. Well, we're closing in on game time here between the Tigers and Black Knights. We'll wrap things up from here next. This is RIT Sports Zone Pre Game Live. RIT Sports Zone pregame live. It's Army and RIT. The Black Knights looking to beat the Tigers for the first time since January 30th. 
of 2015. Hey, just a reminder, we're back with you on Friday as the Tigers welcome Arizona State. Oh, they're going to love the weather to the Policini Center for the first time for a non-conference showdown against the nationally ranked Sun Devils. Face off 7.05 on the first, but you can see it on CW Rochester at 10 o'clock. And after tonight, only five games remain on the regular season schedule. If you haven't been out to the Policini Center, time is running out. Get your seats for Arizona State. Robert Morris or Canisius at the box office or online at RITtickets.com. Well, that's going to do it for another edition of RIT Sports Zone Pregame Live. Thanks so much for watching. Up next, John and Gene will have all the action for you, and we'll see you back here for the intermission report. Until then, enjoy the game, everyone. RIT Sports Zone's live coverage of Tiger Hockey begins right now.